the man downfield. Number 66, 10 yards, repeat, second half. James Cadigan, left guard, left early. Talking to Big Dave before the game, he said, he's never been around any Jet team that's worked hard as this team, and the frustration of having to come back Monday after Monday after a loss, and then finally they got the win. And he said, the one thing we hope to build on is that we were one and zero in our division. If we can keep winning in our division, we're still in it. So that's one of the interesting things about the Jets' schedule. Now they came in here one and four, but they both they they have not lost to anybody in the AFC East. Now they have to play the Bills twice. They have to play Miami twice. If they can win their division, they go to the playoffs. Ronnie Nagel gets some time, delivers the ball up for grabs on a skip and goes to Al Tuna to the 35-yard line. It's a first down for the Jets. How to put this play in? This thing worked very well. I mean, it got tuned downfield. I, I think they were trying to hit Freeman McNeil. I'm not sure, but this ball is thrown like a rock. Watch this. Bam, he has no chance for it. The ball's up in the air. Tuna's there. Nice tip drill. Makes the catch and gets the first down. Great games for Al Toon, a three-time Jet MVP, with a reception, 98 games in a row. So the Jets get their biggest play of the day. A 19-yard gain on a tip ball, first and 10. McNeil, Jeff Harad, 54, the leading tackler for the Colts. Inside linebacker from Mississippi made the stop. This is a, a very interesting defense again, folks, because if you didn't see the first half, the Colts put used four linebackers, and Entman is one of the guys of the defensive linemen, along with Sam Clancy, the only two defensive linemen in the game. And the Jets, for some reason, think that they can run against it. They have not had any success running against this defense, even though there are only four. There are four linebackers in the game and two down linemen. Bickett and Banks are the two linebackers that get up on the line of scrimmage, and they are defensive ends that rush. Nagel on a delayed draw, and Steve Entman makes the stop. Entman, Coriot, Harad, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I, I don't know why you think you can run against this defense because they're going towards the passer. Number 90 is Entman. He's on white, number 67. They're actually a double team. He makes the read, gets back to the inside. Coriot, number 55, is also in there on the play. For two number ones. Yep, Up the first two picks, Entman was the Outland Trophy winner, the Lombardi Award winner, the number one player in college football in the opinion of the pro scouts, who know best, the number one pick in the draft. Nagel, they're giving some good time, he delivers the ball downfield, beautifully done by Al Toon, running in the open field, he's down to the Colts 30-yard line. So the Jets pass blockers digging in and fighting off the Colts to give their young quarterback Rowdy Nagel some time and he delivers the biggest gainer of the day. It really is. Take a look. Uh, here comes Toon down Daniel downfield. Danny releases him inside to Pryor. They're waiting downfield for him. Good is down there also. But I'm going to tell you something. When you take a, lo a look at this play and you look at Toon, he gets himself open. Not only that, but, but getting downfield after the catch. But the, the thing starts way back. When you give Nagel that much time, he's going to find somebody open. He's got a good gun himself. There's Thomas. Out in the backfield. Sam Clancy got there first, and then Quentin Coria. Big rookie linebacker from Texas A&M, number 55, got him. I think Sam Clancy pulled a hamstring. He got up limping. He grabbed, he grabbed his leg. This play just takes too long. Look how this, this thing sets up. Blair Thomas, there's no place to go. Sam Clancy is in the backfield. Once he misses, watch who's around. All the people. Entman, the linebackers, Bickett's there, Belzer's there, and Sam Clancy is limping. Big Sam never played college football. He was a standout basketball player at Pittsburgh. And in fact, he played for Bobby Knight's gold medal winning team in the Pan American Games in 79. John Hand will be the guy that subs in for Clancy on this low defense. Bobby's last trip to Puerto Rico. Here's a throw over the middle to the 29-yard line. Mark Boyer had the ball on his fingertips, but it came in low. Coriat was dropping back to cover. This would have been a super catch by Boyer. I, I mean, that ball was down low, trying to get away from the defender. And Nagel throws his ball. The one place that can, only place it can be caught. Look at this, down and away. Boyer just can't, really doesn't have a chance. 
Now you see Corriott covering the, the linebacker, or the, covering the tight end. They said about this guy, he can fly. Yes, with their young field goal kicker, Terry Blanchard, who hit three of three against the Patriots. Last Sunday night, standing by. Third down throw, here's Nagel and Big Brother. Safety blitz gets him. John Baylor, the strong safety, came in unblocked. Big play call by the defensive coordinator, Rick Venturi. They said everyone. I mean, this is what you call bailing out. Now, the Jets did it. And now watch. Here they come. Baylor, look at number 36. Nobody gets him. And he's right there. When Nagel peels out, he looks downfield. There's just no place to go. Tony McCoy was also there, number 94. Now they have to punt. They were in field goal position. Now they have to kick a punt. There's Louis Aguiar back to punt. Big sack. First sack of the day for the Colts defense. Takes the Jets out of field goal range. Mike Pryor is back deep. I just said kick a punt. You can't throw a punt, can you? <laughs> you ought to know you did it for 14 years, right? Good punt there. A high punt that forces Pryor into a third cap that is 15. Burkett, who was the Jets MVP last season, almost forced to drop the ball. Colts have the ball when we come back. Seven. There's Rick Venturi, the defensive coordinator of the Colts. He's known some lean time, Paul. Oh, yeah, well, one victory as a head coach here was against the Jets back in November the 10th, 91. He was the happiest guy. Ever. I mean, he did, he's beside himself. He said he's been through some hard times in a year, but he's very happy. He won some one more the yeah. Northwestern Wildcats, and they got beat 55 nothing by Michigan. There's Sam Clancy going off to get checked out. Venturi said after he got beat 55 nothing by Michigan, the only difference between me and General Custer is he didn't have to watch the game film. <laughs> He's a very spirited guy, though, as the Jets play some spirited defense and close on the runner, Anthony Johnson, quickly. And remember, Johnson got off to a quick start in the first half. Jets still hanging in despite very limited offense. They're down just three to nothing. Now, this is a hurry-up offense. This is not like Cincinnati's hurry-up offense where they try to trick you. I mean, that's what Sam White, when he had it, they try to get people changing when he got them changing, get you with 12 people on the field. They don't try to do that. Neither do the Bills try to do that. They're, but they're a little bit more methodical with, with their offense here. Anthony Johnson runs the ball out across the 20 to the 22-yard line where Kyle Clifton, the Jets middle backer, who's been a top player for them now for nine seasons, Makes the stop, 59. But again, about this offense, the, the, they say the Bills run can run a play about every 15 seconds, which is it's really a, a two-minute drill the entire time. Well, the Colts, again, Marsha Broda told Jeff George, take your time. Run this offense at your pace until you get it adjusted. You look there, you know, you got 45 second clock, and you're down to 15. It's, it's over 30 seconds already. And Jeff Cook said they never quick snap you. There's the throw downfield. Jesse Hester drops a perfectly thrown ball. Huh. Huh. I'm going to tell you what. That man right there, you ought to be a little frustrated, pal. Because that ball hit Jesse Hester. I mean, you cannot throw a ball any better than he just did. And he put the ball between two defenders. Watch this. Throw. Look where this ball hits Jesse Hester. Bang. I guess between the eight and the four. You can't throw it any better than that. And you can't catch it for him. You think Michael Brim, 43, might have yelled something that he was coming his way to Belden? Boo. Yell boo. He yelled something. Best throw of the day. Well, what some took his mind off, you're getting $800,000 a year, <laughs> supposedly, to catch things thrown right at you. Better catch it. Rob Carpenter taken down at the 31-yard line. A 56-yard punt. A 10-yard return by Carpenter. Jason Bells are on the stop. And the Jets will go on offense once again. A drop. Third down throw that was right on the numbers by Jeff George. He dropped it. Colts had a punt. Now the Jets go, trailing 3 0. Nagel again gets time. It is a completion of beautifully executed play. Rob Moore. Right roping the sideline, makes the reception, gets ahead for a jet first down. Now they're bringing it back. Well, they have movement on the line. I think 69 was moving. 
Jeff Criswell, I think. Two men on the offense moving at the same time. Illegal motion. Five yards, repeat, first down. Bruce Watt, the holding penalty. I mean, that play right there, you, Browning Nagel gives you an idea of the, the composure he had. He rolls out, he waited, he waited, he waited, and then he finally threw the ball downfield, had a first down to Rob Moore. Yep, winning the time of possession. A statistic I know that's dear to your heart. Yeah, really. They still have a goose tag up there. Do you understand? Trying to catch on. That big circle doesn't mean anything. That means nothing. Zip. Now Nagel has to check off. Call a timeout. He sees something in the defense. Get cooked. Thought they'd see a lot of blitzes today. There haven't been many by the Colts. They got Nagel on one big one, though, for Zach. I've never been into that bench pressing, but I guess 600's a lot. <laughs> First down and 15 for the Jets now. And they go to the run, and Blair Thomas weaving his way ahead. Skirts ahead, and he's got all the way across the 35-yard line again on the play of about 11 yards by Blair Thomas. Number 54, Jeff Harrod, is, is a middle linebacker, one of the middle guys. Now, here he is. Sweeney is blocking on him. He's there. He gets off the play, makes the hit. Makes the tackle. That's a good run. Again, finding his way up the middle as the Jets with a trap block open the gates and Blair Thomas then picks his way through the front seven. Nice block on Harrod. All right, here we go again. Now, this is Sweeney just checking out on Harrod. That's his man. He's got him lined up and just Blair Thomas just sets up the block for Sweeney. I mean, Sweeney's already there, but he makes that move to the left, his left, sets up Harrod. Sweeney just takes him that way. First down. College coach Joe Paterno said of Thomas that he's probably the only one I've ever seen who loses no speed when he cuts. He absolutely maintains full speed with sharp cuts. He's making some more of those cuts as the Jets find a hole in the middle of the Colts defense now. Quentin Florian, number 55, on the tackle, Thomas. Again, the Colts are playing that loaded, they call the loaded defense with four linebackers and only two defensive linemen. Now the two defensive linemen are Edmund, number 90, and number 78, John Hand. Tony McCoy comes in. Hand goes out. So there's still only two, le two legal defensive guys. Sam Clancy would have been the guy in there. Tony McCoy is now in, in the place that Sam Clancy would be. His throw as Chip Banks, the left linebacker, is coming on a delayed blitz. 51. He's looking at Mark Boyer. When you run a bootleg, you know, it, it's very difficult against linebackers with the experience of, of Beckett and Banks. Now, watch this. Here, here comes Browning Nagel to the outside, but watch who's in his face right now. Chip Banks just read it perfectly, was in his face. No place to throw the ball, but throw it away. When you run a bootleg, you got to hope you freeze that linebacker on the outside like that because there's no one there to block him. Banks, one of the NFL's sack leaders with six and four games, but none today. They've gotten the Nagel just once. Here's a throw and a drop by Freeman McNeil. Started to turn up field before he fully had the ball. Boy, and Harrod, Jeff Harrod was there. I think Freeman McNeil might have gotten the first down. I mean, Bruce, <laughs> you know, he's throwing his hands up saying, you know, what do we have to do? I, I, again, we're in another situation. Here's Browning Nagel. He throws the ball out to Freeman McNeil, and he's not ready for the staff. He's looking around. Watch the ball hit him. Whoops, hello. Here's a ball. Freeman McNeil, and when he throws it to the outside, he can't catch it. Louis Aguiar back in to punt. The Jets have been outscored this season prior to today, 117-81. to Today, they've been outscored 3-0. That field goal, the only scoring in the first half. And again, Mike Pryor, by, on the high punt by Aguiar, is forced into a fair catch deep in his own end. So Jeff George and the Colts offense ready to work again. George in his right arm will soon be trying to get the Colts out of jail here as they're backed up inside their 10-yard line. He doesn't want to use timeouts like he did early in the first half. And had enough time to work late in half. 
and then he stopped the clock. And they pick up the blitz. Tied on throw. He makes the completion out to the 14-yard line. Again, the five yards. Ah, finally threw it to the tight end. That a boy, Kerry Cash. I mean, you got a linebacker on Cash. And it looks like he got poked in the eye. Got a twin brother that played for the Steelers last year, Keith Cash. They both got a cash in, huh? Yep. He did get poked in the eye. So, uh, first year player, Charles Arbuckle, goes in. As they attend to carry on the sideline, second down in the long four. Another quick throw. Ooh, almost a pickoff. Skipped off the hands of Reggie Langhorn. Boy, he did. George is upset with his receivers. Well, Lang I'll tell you what he's upset with on this play is Langhorn stopped. As he was coming across the middle, had he kept going, he'd been able to catch the ball. The ball would have been in his hands. He just stopped and short-armed the ball. That brings up third down and four now for the Colts. Yep, can hold here. They could get good field position off the punt. Long ball. Hester's going for it. He stops his route. The penalty marker comes in. It could be a major penalty call against the Jets here as he was hooked. What I think they're going to call, if they call anything at all, it's going to be a holding call. Because it looked like Hester hooked up with, here's Brim. Now watch what happens. There's no, you can't have contact here. Hester stops. Now as he goes to go again, does Brim he's grab him? Right there on the arm. That's what he's complaining about. The official called it. It is a holding call. So third and four, an incomplete pass, and instead a huge penalty call against the Jets. They had a 25-yard call against them earlier in the game on a pass interference. And the Colts stay alive and move the ball over midfield on the penalty to the 49-yard line of New York. But it, don't, don't you just love Pete Carroll? He can't be caught up in all the penalties and stuff. He just said, that's a 36-yard play. But if, if Pete Carroll said, hey, let's get on with the defense. Yeah. He's signaling defense and says, don't lose your composure. You're only down by three, defense. Stay with it. All right, we had a bad break. Hits back to Blair Thomas, who's inside the 45-yard line, down to the 44. Or to Ken Clark, excuse me, the 32 on the Colts. As a jet is down on the play. Looks like uh, Mark Gunn, number 96, their left end. They do not need any more injuries in their defensive line. The Jets have already lost their starting defensive ends, Jeff Lagerman and Dennis Bird. Bird will be back this season. Three nothing count. Don Pricky with Paul McGuire in the first half. It was missed field goals by Indianapolis. Two of them by Biasucci that hurt the Colts. And the second half has been dropped passes. Getting the Jets in the game. You can't catch a ball when you go like that with your hands. <laughs> you got to look the ball in. And we, we're looking for you. McNeil drops a pass. It could have been a first down. Hester drops a pass. I mean, the quarterbacks are putting the ball where they have to put it. The receivers have to catch it. That simple. How much you say he's making? 800000 Right up there. Plants, to your point out, gets 725,000. He doesn't have to catch it. 42,000 a game as a backup defensive end. Here is Ken Clark, who takes it ahead inside the 40 and down to the 38 yard line. When things go your way, they start to go your way. Jeff George almost doesn't get there. Watch this here. He's stumbling, he was stepped on, he comes out, he almost misses the connection, and that opened up the hole. Jeff George gets the ball to his running back, but by, the, by that hesitation, opened the hole up. Kenny Clark picked up the first down. Jeff has to keep them out of the end zone. The way their offense has gone today, the Jets, the uh, touchdown by the Colts could be the knockout punch. Two minutes and 18 seconds to play in the third quarter. Kyle Clifton aligning the blitz, then pulls out of the gap. Here's a quick out. All goes to Langhorn, two arms down it. Langhorn after the drop comes right back and makes a big first down reception to the 25 yard line. Good point, and he makes up for the drop. He makes up for the drop, and you, and you gotta like it. Jeff George goes right back to him. Not only is the ball there, look at look at this ball on the mark, but after the catch, Langhorn picks up the first down. I think you're right. If the Colts score a touchdown. 
because the Jets aren't even getting close. Langhorn holding a, apparently banged up his hand to wrist. This could be a decoy though. He's probably going to catch it with one hand now. <laughs> this is your high school ball. First down and ten, Indianapolis. James Hasty was closed in quickly. Gorgeous, confident ball throwing those outs when he can throw it that hard. Uh, you see Langhorn still hold his wrist again. It didn't seem to bother him on that catch. And it, it, it takes a strong arm to throw this ball where he threw it. Because James Hasty is coming up. Watch this here. Uh, is his wrist all right? Nice catch. Hasty's there. Not a two-yard game. Langhorn. They haven't got a whole lot else to go to. They got a couple of young players. Eddie Miller, a first-year player. Clarence CNN Verdan. And they call CNN because he talks 24 hours a day. <laughs> it doesn't catch many, at least this year, as there is a play in the backfield. Mo Lewis comes from the outside backer position, number 57. Makes the stop on Ken Clark. Mo Lewis was blitzing all the way on the play, and no one was there to block him. They overloaded on the one side. Look at here. Here's the play. Mo Lewis comes in. Nobody gets out to block him. Moss, number 73, was the closest guy to him. He doesn't make the play. That's going to wind out the third quarter as quarterback Jeff George just comes to the sidelines before the quarter ends to get as much advice as he can. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. The Colts lead the Jets three to nothing. We're back at the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis. We're ready to start the fourth quarter. The Indianapolis Colts still holding to a 3-0 lead over the Jets on a first-half field goal by Dean Biafucci that came after he'd missed his previous two field goal tries. The Jets have never really threatened to score. They got down fairly close once and a sack through them way back. They never even tried a field goal. It's not been near the end zone. Jeff George takes a look, gets time, goes to an open man. Running with the ball is Kerry Cash, the tight end, and he's down to the 10-yard line. And a third and 13 play, they get 18 yards and a first down. Frick, look at this. Somebody, you talk about what the offensive line does. Hold it right there. Freeze this. Look at that lane that Jeff George has to look down. There is not a white shirt that he has to worry about coming at him. All he has to do now is find a receiver he wants open. He looks to the left. Here's Kerry Cash on the outside, the tight end. He is wide open, first down. But it starts with the offensive line blocking, and they open up that hole. Look at the positioning of those lines and also the spot is put being in. Great second look at our producer today for NBC Sports is Glenn Adamo, our director John Gilmartin, second producer Terry O'Neill. As the throw to the end zone is picked off, the Jets stop the threat. And running the ball back is Michael Brim all the way out across the 25-yard line as the Jets again deliver the big play to keep the Colts from scoring. The play was to Jesse Hester. He was supposed to run a post pattern to the inside. He breaks back to the outside. What happens? Jeff George throws the ball on target. Watch this. And Brim's the only guy there. When he throws the ball, watch where Hester is. See him going to the corner on the right side? Nobody there. Brim says, thank you. I'll take this and bring it out to the 25. What a heads-up defensive play. Now, you've got to believe on that particular play that, that Jesse Hester went the wrong way. He was supposed to run a slant. If that's the case, Jesse is not covering himself with glory today. A big drop earlier. Antman stops the run. Number 90. There isn't much we've seen in the first three quarters of this ball game that would go in either one of their highlight films. But I'll tell you what. They've been playing some great defense, both of these teams. And I watch Entman, number 90. He's just coming down the line of scrimmage. Blair Thomas goes there. Entman has got Irv Eatman was trying to block on him. It's there. They're fired up. That's a loss of two. Second and 12. Crowd has really kicked in now. Jets go back to the run. Blair Thomas runs it. Entman again catches him from behind this time. Catches him seven yards downfield. 
And the Jets are still trying to run against this defense, and we're looking at Edmund again. Now, there is a block by White. Watch Edmund spin back out to the outside. Is that a great play or not? And then back, back in to make the tackle? Come on. That is outstanding play. Edmund looked like a football player early in life. As a high school junior, he weighed 275. Now he's about 295. And he seems like about 1,000 for the Jet blockers. Nagel throws. He makes the connection. Down it goes to the 39-yard line. First down, Jets. On a third and four play, Alton, the receiver, Chris Gu, the tackler. When Jeff George came off, he went to the bench. And sitting on the bench, Brooks 80 and Langhorne, the singer. He walked over and pointed to his head, Crick, and he said, think. You've got to think when you're out there. And that time, it cost him at least a field goal, possibly a touchdown down there. Now here are the Jets turning it around. Very good point. You picked that up that he ran the wrong pattern and his defender standing there ready to catch it. First down. Entman. There's Entman. Starting to look like the Outland Trophy winner and the Lombardi Award winner and the number one draft pick. Well, you know, when we talked uh, to the people here at the Colts yesterday, and when we asked about Entman and Coriot, they said the reason they drafted these guys and watch number 90, here he comes. He splits the two lineman and makes the play. There's Chip Banks, number 51, making a tackle, but Edmund was there. But they said as soon as they drafted these two guys, 90 and 55, they knew right now that they're going to play. They penciled them in. They said, he, these two guys are playing. Now we need to find nine more. <laughs> <laughs> well, you knew Harad was one and Bickett and Banks, but the linebackers were really good. Downfield throw, tip ball, and Kerry Good almost picked it off. A tremendous play by this former Alabama running back. Kerry Good now playing corner. They were trying to hit Burkett coming across the middle, and Good was right there and made a sensational play. Now we're seeing some excellent defense. We've been seeing it all day long, some good defense, but watch Good. Gets his hand there, balls up in the air. It is It's excellent coverage. A little frustration, he wanted the ball. It's Two and he had a chance to pick it off today. Big down now for Nagel and the Jets. Third down, they need 11. And all of a sudden, the Hoosier Dome really comes alive. Edmund chasing him down, and he gets him. 16 yard loss on the sack by Edmund. He's a big one, old Steve. <laughs> and he loves, he's just having a, a great time playing football. Talking to some of the linemen on offense, Kevin Paul, he said he can't believe how this kid works. He never opens his mouth. I watch it. He just goes, he just throws right away and gets back to Nagel. Oh. <laughs> that is outstanding play. Yes, sir. Big one from Eastern Washington. University of Washington Husky played in their national championship team, and that forces a punt, Clarence Verdan. The reception. Clarence has a rap song out now called Peace Y'all. Not moving up the charts that well, but yeah, that'll be number one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back. This is Don Crickey with Paul McGuire back at the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis where the Colts, who won not at all here last year, they were 0-8 at home. They were 1-15 for the season, their lone victory over the Jets at Giant Stadium last November. Continue to lead the Jets 3-0. A tremendous play by the top rookie in the draft. Steve Entman just took the Jets out of position and made them punt the ball. Oh, he made a, he made a great play on, on Dwayne White. I mean, he just threw him away. He just, just threw him aside, and he was so quick. Watch this. Watch it from the end zone. Number 90. Just, there's White, he's by. Once he's by, it's over with now. Browning Nagel is gone. You're down. Browning working hard to elude him, but you couldn't get away from Entman. Who John James, the coach of Washington, said is the best football player I've ever seen at college level. Well, and now you, when you're watching these guys, Coriot is really not having to do too much today, but you, you, now you know why that when they drafted him, they knew they were going to start. Oh, 
Jets go first down and 10 from their 36 yard line. George with a throw. Brooks with a catch. And for a first down, he's down to the Jets 43 yard line. Frick, first of all, there aren't many quarterbacks that can make this throw. And I'm not kidding you. He's rolling to his right, he being Jeff George. He's rolling out to his right, and then he throws it back towards the middle of the field to Brooks. And to, to have that much confidence in your arm and that much velocity to get it there, watch this. Here he is rolling out to his right. Now look where he throws the ball. He's beyond the numbers. Look at this ball. Right on target. It hits him in the chest. I mean, that's a perfect throw going the other way. There aren't many guys that can throw it. That well. Jeez. Here's a pitch back, Anthony Johnson, who's been quiet for a while, runs on first down and gets ahead for three yards. He's to the Jet 40-yard line. It's, the game clock is down to 9.30 to play, and it remains a 3-0 game, the Colts in the lead. One of the keys, I'll give it to you right after you do this. I was just going to remind people next Sunday, Paul, the Chiefs, who today beat the Eagles. Play the Cowboys at Irving, Texas, a big game. The day starts with NFL Live at 12.30 Eastern Time. San Diego comes to Indianapolis. And San Diego, while most likely not a playoff team, has one of the best defenses in the NFL. It grades out number four right now. We'll be here doing that game, and we've seen San Diego twice, and they are some kind of defensive team. It'll be a nice matchup for this Colts offense. Might be a nothing-nothing shutout. George throws and very nearly was intercepted as the Jets had the coverage on. He had nowhere to go and the rush was coming. And this is intentional grounding, my friend. That's probably right. But they're not going to call it. Uh, I mean, there's, there was absolutely no one around. Jeff George throws his ball. Now watch. Look to the left. Do you see a receiver? There's not a receiver near there. Hester's going outside. Look at this. There's nothing but white shirts. Joe Kelly was there. Yeah, but he has to have seen. See, the blue guys Wrong are the Colts. <laughs> yeah. And the guys in the white shirts happen to be the Jets. Okay. I'm just trying to help you out. Wait up for me. Catching <laughs> on. Second down. Opening 15. Here comes the heat. There's a throw. Anthony Johnson on the run. He takes on a tackle and gets to the 40-yard line. That'll bring up third down and about seven. Johnson just smiling. He's happy to be playing. <laughs> well, he never got much work his first couple of years. He's a key player on Notre Dame's last national championship team in 88. You know, Kirk, we were talking about the Jets, and one of the things that, that Pete Carroll told us is we got to keep this defense off the, off, off the, uh, off the field and the, the offense moves the ball. This defense has been on the field all day, and boy, I'll tell you something, they've done a great job. Okay, now the Colts have a free play. Jeff George is going to. The play goes the other way for the Jets. There's uh, about a 25 yard sack on the play. Paul Fraze was in there along with uh, Marvin Washington. Washington finally got him. And they're going to be offside, though. The Jets are going to bring this back in the, the, the 25 yard loss. Offside, defense. Pete Carroll looking for answers. Greg Robinson is the off defensive line coach for the Jets. Two good ones. You know, you look at him. Yeah. You look at this, this, this Pete Carroll. I'm mean, going to tell you, nothing frustrates him. I mean, I, I like him as a defensive coordinator. He does so many things so well, and he's always in the ball game. I don't care what the score is out there. I don't care what the offense is doing. That's not his concern. His concern is this defense. We've already held them to only three points in this ball game. They've had the ball three times as much as we've had the ball, probably three times as many yards as we've had. But we're still in the ball game with only three points, and that's what counts. Well, as you pointed out earlier, Paul, in that 36-yard pass interference penalty, all the other coaches were protesting the officials, and Carroll was getting his guys ready for the next play because oh, yeah. it's coming up regardless. 7.52 to go and a timeout on the field. Chabrota, who is the second oldest head coach in the NFL, the oldest is Marv Levy of the Bills, looking out as he sees a third down arrive for his Colts, third down and three. As they hold a 3-0 lead in the fourth quarter over the New York Jets. Jets fake blitz. Anthony Johnson gets the ball, and the Jets read it all the way. Mario Johnson again was in on the play, and again, the Colts have to punt the ball, so the Jets get another chance with 7.38 to go. They took time out to call that? Yeah. <laughs> 
Took time out to call a play to cause a three yard loss. But I mean, you're looking at punting again to the, the, uh, take the penalty. Well, Ron again. Stark, the NFL's leading punter, three times a Pro Bowl player, back to hit the ball. He'll punt it from about the 50 yard line, which for him is a pooch punt. Try to angle it in as deep back is Rob Carpenter, number 82 for the Jets. Take a penalty here. Yeah. His leg's so strong, they're doing this so they give him more room to kick it. He can place Play the ball game, easier to mark back. Jets and Colts play what a lot of people think was the most significant NFL game, or certainly one of them ever. Back in January 12th of 1969, that was the day the Jets is almost a three touchdown underdog, beat the Baltimore Colts in Super Bowl three. Soon after came the AFL NFL merger. Their only postseason meeting. The left footer hits a knuckleball downfield and he forces a fair catch. A fumble ball is picked up by the Colts. Anthony Johnson, he goes in. You can't advance that. He's going to mark it down. You can't advance the ball for the touchdown. He'll get the ball at about the 14 yard line. You know turnovers we talked about them you can't do turnovers this is what the team talked about you can't make a mistake this even in this ball game the whole time Carpenter just drops the ball look at this Johnson is right there he gets the ball inside the 15 yard line Colts have it back I mean you just when you're struggling again you cannot make those kinds of mistakes that's it brought up. thank you He's seen his team miss two very makeable field goals. Saw an end zone pass intercepted when the receiver cut the wrong way. Ruling is a muff of the fumble. Here is the referee Jerry Austin, a muff of the punt. And you can't advance it. Rob Carpenter is the Jet who lost the punt. Anthony Johnson is the Colt who picked it up. Anthony's got some moves. You get him a 10 on this, this flip. Perfect. Roll over. Up. Nice drill. Nice drill. So the Colts with their 3 nothing fourth quarter lead at 6.30 to play now. Go first and 10 of the Jet. 15. That's left early. Now for down. Hester can't hold on to it. I don't think you can call Hester on that. If you put on Pop put on him. Well, they're going to they're gonna call Lonnie Young, I, I think, for popping him. Uh, I mean, that... <laughs> It well, looked like a ping-pong ball. They, they threw the ball in the air. Hester goes up. He comes down. He doesn't make the catch. He, but watch at the end of it. Here's the ball in your hands. Bang. Here comes Lonnie Young. Now, you know what? The head buddy. He hit him with his face mask. He hit him his, his head. Defense. We're going to enforce both fouls. We have all sides on the defense. And we have a personal foul after the play's over. Late hit Double hit the against line. the Jets. Offside on the Jets. Personal foul on the Jets, and the referee just said they're enforcing both fouls. Well, the, the personal foul comes after the play. Okay? So you get just even though it's a split the, second in, right? Phrase is offside right here. That's offside. There's one. Okay? That's one. That second one's kind of tough though. Well, it is football. Yeah, but he hit him with his helmet in the head. And that's where he, where he hit, watch him. He hits him in the head here. Bang. And that's where they called it. I mean, it just, it looks like a good solid hit to me. Now, if they're going to enforce both of them, first of all, you enforce the five-yard penalty, which takes the, the ball down to the 10. The and then the you enforce the half the, half distance. the distance. Here it goes. The One, two. Foul takes it to the five. First of all, half the distance. So now they got it to five. That's right. Even I had that figured out. I know you did, Rick. You were right on top of that. Got it. Ooh, what it all means is they sort this out and miss a field goal, and we still stay three nothing. <laughs> the end zone has not been entered. Either way, three nothing Colts.
Now, he's had some drops, and he's had a guy run the wrong way, and that was his worst play of the day. He threw it right to a defender who dropped it. Why don't you put Reese Parson in the ball game, number 44, let him block, and send Johnson up in there four times, or at least three times. Then miss the field goal. Yeah, and then miss it. But, I mean, you're, you're, first of all, when you're throwing the ball, and you've got six minutes and 28 seconds to go in the ball game, you're throwing the ball, and the ball's knocked down, or almost intercepted, but knocked down, that stops the clock. If you're running the ball, at least you're going to be able to run two or three minutes off the clock. Well, there you go. Anthony Johnson turning the corner, heading towards the end zone. He's not in. Touchdown saving tackle by Alana Young and more flags down. Alana Young, this one looks like holding against the Colts, which will move that back. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Here's, here, here's a situation that I just don't agree with in professional football. Now, holding number 80, 10 yards, Billy Brooks. Now, I'll tell you what I don't agree with. They're going to get the holding penalty, and they're going to get a 10-yard penalty back, right? Now, when the Colts, or when the Jets got caught for the personal foul, they only got five yards out of it. My feeling is this. If, it's, if that's the case, in a major, major penalty down there, they only get five, then on a major penalty on the Colts, they should only get five yards back this way and not the full 10. Something to consider, really. Hey, I like it. Sounded good to me when I thought about it. They're not going to go with it, but here's George now rolling out. He's got a free left chance. He doesn't like to run, quite obviously. He takes the 12th man and bails out. He could have taken off and gone. I guess he's taken his hit for the day from Bobby Houston, which at the time looked like it might be a rib breaker, but he was only out for a play. Now Bobby Houston goes down. He looked like he pulled something. Yeah, but I mean, these fans here, don't, don't go booing Jeff George because the guy runs out of bounds. He's your franchise, folks. I mean, you, what do you want him to do? Run up and get nailed again? Here goes Jeff George. Kevin Call gets an excellent block. George gets to the outside. Here's where he had the chance to go now, but he didn't. He goes out of bounds, and these people booed him. I don't understand that one. He's no question. He's a franchise. All the teams that have come up markedly from very bad records have done it with the franchise quarterback and the dominating down lineman. First the... Steelers did it with Joe Green and Bradshaw. The Bills did it with Bruce Smith and then Jim Kelly. Kelly was drafted to be for Smith, but he came after him because he played in the USFL. Colts could be doing it with Steve Entman and Jeff George. They're working on Bobby Houston over on the sidelines, and that's what the delay is. And you know when they pull when when, when they pull your, your your foot back like that, more often than not it's cramps, and I think that's what he's got. Number 55 is running along the goal line. Watch here, and I think he just he just gets cramps. He got he got a cramp in his leg, okay. and he's down. Yeah, he's down. And <laughs> I don't know if you've never had it, you don't understand. It really hurts. I mean, a lot. He's been an excellent player, Bobby Houston, a Plan B acquisition from Atlanta. Now the Colts go with a flood formation. They've got every receiver they have running pattern tier. They're down. From the 13-yard line, Jeff George gets some time, starts to run out of it. Puts the ball away and almost throws it to Paul Freeze as George is down and he could be hurt. He's not getting up. Yes, he now is. Intentional grounding against George. I mean, Jeff, if you're going to throw that ball away, throw it away a little bit sooner than that, not while you're getting hit. I mean, Intentional grounding. Number 11. That's the loss of down. Penalty and loss of down. But here's, I mean, if you're going to throw it away, throw it away now. Not when you're getting hit and you're going down. Rookie Kurt Barber, number 98, got him. And Jeff George is down on one day. Well, he's just taking a blow. Oh, he's, now he's yelling at the bench. Obviously, he's all right. Pete Carroll. Look at Pete Carroll. He got that little smile on his face. Yep. Yep, that's our defense is doing it to you, son. Jet offense hasn't been in shouting distance of the end zone. Still scoreless are the Jets, trailing 3 nothing. Look at Pete Carroll. He's hugging his, his players. Hasty is there. And Pete Carroll, look, you think, watch his intentional grounding. Look at <laughs> Intentional ground. Oh, you got it. Now what? You got to slow down. Slow down. Slow down, Pete. Got to get that motor out of, out of third gear. 
Iasucci ready to try a field goal. This will be a 47-yarder. Yes, here missed the field goal. Form chart has not changed. Now the Jets rise up. Throw back the Colts. Get an intentional grounding. Lost it down. And Biasucci misses his third field goal in four tries. But he did make one. And that's the difference in the game. As the Colts continue to lead with 520 to play. Three to nothing. Sid. He's the guy that gets his hand up. I mean that, that ball. That ball never cleared the, the line. Brace is not that tall. But he got up in the air. Got that hand up. That's what they teach you to do. Is get your hand up in the air. You never know when, it's, when something's going to happen. That time it did. Well, you got to give an awful lot of credit to this Jet defense. Uh, they yeah. meant something. And to the Colt defense. Blair Thomas protecting the ball. Both hands on it. Neither the Jets really dodged a bullet in that last one because that came after the fumbled punt by Carpenter that Anthony Johnson recovered deep in the Jets' end, and they still came away with no points. They had it at the 14-yard line and couldn't make anything happen with it. You said it right at the beginning when they got the ball. They missed the field goal. Well, they had it blocked. Jeff George, when he said was down, he's got that talent about he bit his tongue. And Sam Clancy is back in the ball game for the Colts. There's the man to block it. Second down and seven for Browning Nagel of the Jets. He's got room to run. He can take it himself for the first down. Look at this one. Quentin Corey has come across the field. This is a mobile linebacker. Mobile linebacker. And also Edmund was it as the other guy that was chasing Corey. Nagel. Man. But Corey has got tremendous speed. We talked about that. Browning Nagel is going to come out to the left of your screen here. Look at 55. He's in the middle. Watch him. Watch him close. Here comes 55. Coria. <laughs> Let me get out of here. <laughs> they Where's talk it? about his sideline to sideline range. He just showed it. But the Jets get a first down on the scramble by Browning Nagel. 4.33 to go. Lock starts with a snap. Jets down 3 0. Blair Thomas to the 45 yard line. Stopped by Edmund. Jets are going to be very cautious here, Paul, not to do anything drastic that would force a turnover or allow one. They could get into field goal range, maybe tie it, possibly win it, get the coin flip and win it in overtime on a field goal. Yeah, but Terry Blanche's leg's probably asleep. He hasn't used it. <laughs> Except the, the kickoff in the beginning of the game at, at uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon. Gary Blanchard, the new place kicker, was three for three on field goals and extra points. He was the margin of difference last Sunday night in the Jets' first win. Handoff goes to Blair Thomas. He's ahead for a first down. First down for the Jets at the 49. Big Earth and a 320 pounds blocking Coriat. And Edmund are switching their lineup. Corey at the linebacker lines up against him here. Watch her beatman now. He gets his hands out to the outside. Just a, not a whole lot of holding, just a, enough to get by. <laughs> Can't get those arms outside. They're going to call him on it. First down, Nagel. Here comes the rush. Downfield throw. Tip ball and almost intercepted. Burkett had a hand on it. But when it hit the turf, a Colt was right there with it. Harad, Harad was downfield. Jeff Harad, number 54, is covering. He's the guy that's looking for Burkett coming across the middle. Watch, watch 54 get in this play right here. There's Jeff Harad makes the tip. It's getting some depth. Jets fighting for their lives. A one and four team after a perfect preseason. And after this, they have a week off and three of the AFC's best, Buffalo, Miami, and Denver. They need this game, and they're down 3 nothing with 3.08 to play. Safety blitz. Second down throw for Kett in the open field. Chris Burkett still on the run is down to the 24-yard line. So the Jets get the big play. And Chris Burkett, the MVP of the season ago, voted that by his teammates, gets the first down. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. It was a, it was a blitz, all-out blitz by both safeties, and Browning Nagel read it perfectly. 
He picked the open man, which was Chris Burkett. Got the ball to him. They have the ball inside the 25 to the 24. They're on their way. These guys could be playing after 7 o'clock. Field goal would tie it. Could be an overtime game if they do tie it. Baxter runs as they take it right up the middle. They're playing percentage football now. They're well within range for Kerry Blanchard. And we're down now to the two-minute warning. So the Jets mount their deepest challenge with two minutes to play in the game, still trailing three to nothing. Back at the Hoosier Dome, Kerry Blanchard, a free agent place kicker the Jets picked up. He kicked in the championship game and won the championship game in the World Football League for the Sacramento Sturge. And then last week helped the Jets to their first win. The three field goals, the longest from 47. And three extra points against the New England Patriots in a 30 to 21 Jet win. He could be called on shortly to try and tie this one. There's Miyasuchi sitting up number four. He's he's had two misses and a block today. He's made one though, and that's the difference. Hopefully to three nothing. Freeman McNeil, did he catch the ball? Apparently he did, and he stays inbound, so the clock runs. Over overtime. Paul McGuire looming larger and larger. Really isn't it? What the Jets are really trying to do here is, is they're trying to score a touchdown. There's no question about that. But if they're going to go for the field goal, what they want to do is run as much time off the clock as they can so the Colts won't have a chance to come back to this offense. But you look at those numbers, look at the Colts. 277 yards, they have three points. Defense has been the story for both of these teams all day long. Biggest down of the game for the Jets offense. Third down and seven. Blair Thomas takes it down to the 18-yard line, and that will mean the field goal unit comes out as Coach Coslett checks on the sidelines. The field goal unit's on the field, led by Kerry Blanchard, a free agent from Oklahoma State. See, I don't know why. If I were the Colts, I would take a timeout here. Absolutely. Because the, all, all the Jets are going to do is just run this clock down as far as they possibly can. There's 46 on the clock, 23. So they get down, and the Colts will get the ball with about 30 seconds to go to, in, in the ballgame. And so often in overtime, now we, first we have to see if the kick is good. Be a 35-yarder on the way. It's good. And the Jets tie the game with 30 seconds to play. And that is an absolutely the most valid point yet. Why didn't they stop the clock? Now they have 30 seconds. They could have had a minute to work with. They had, a, yeah, at least a minute to work with, and it has still had one timeout uh, to go. They have two timeouts, but they only have 30 seconds to work with. You lost 30 seconds on the clock, which amounts to about four plays if you get a hurry-up offense like this team has here. Each team with two timeouts, so we know after the Jets kick it off, we'll see the long ball thrown by Jeff George trying to get the Colts in field goal range. Futile as the field goal has been for them today, except for that one that they made. Very often, if you do go to overtime, it's the coin flip that really decides who's going to win it. First possession often wins the game. This could be our second one this year, Trickster. Yep. Woo. Exciting. Well, you got Clarence Verdan back there, and there's the one guy that you just don't want to kick the ball to. Clarence Verdan, he returned to kick for a touchdown in the Colt upset of the Jets last November. He's been quiet today. Aguiar is the kickoff man for the Jets. He has the ball teed up at their 35. 30 seconds to play a 3-3 game. This is where they, they they like to kick the ball up in the air and make the deep or make the offense return team call for a fair catch. We'll see if they do it. Nope. High spinning kick that Verdan will take at the goal line. Here he comes. Whoa. He sprints out of bounds with 24 seconds left. And the Colts will go from their 25-yard line. Dennis Price ran him out after a 25-yard return. Jeff George is in no hurry. 
McCarthy's in the game, you know, you just you wonder, do you do you just go ahead now and run the clock out? And you play pretty good defense. That was the only time that the, the, the Jets had uh, a threat of a score was near the end of the uh, fourth quarter, the end of this fourth quarter here. I think they'll just sit on the ball, go with the coin toss, and that's what they, exactly what they're going to do. They're not going to try and do anything. And they're going to get some boos here. Now the Jets are taking time out. They're going to get booed again. Still they let over 30 seconds tick away while the Jets set for the tying field goal. Well, they've given up three points, okay? So why not? I mean, there's nothing wrong with their defensive football team. They've, they've, they've been uh, handling the Jets most of the day. Let's see what happens in overtime. And, and a lot of times, the team that ends up kicking off is the one with the advantage. Because you've got them deep in their territory, you stop one time, you get a good punt return, and you're in a position to kick a field goal and win the ball game. But percentage-wise, more often the team that gets first possession wins more overtime games since they've gone to overtime. I, I, I would have known that you had the percentage-wise in there. That's true. Okay. How about this? See the overtime records. Colts now looking for that guy with the two-headed coin. <laughs> that, they were in it eight times. One six and lost two. Visitors make the call. They're shaking hands again, which is really nice. <laughs> Starting over. It's yeah, a whole new day. It's a whole new day. Okay, nothing happened so far, guys. Let's. Can you imagine that? They played almost three hours and nothing's happened. Please call the corner when it's Bia, in the air. Bia Succi's down on the 32-yard line kicking hey. field goals. He's practicing. I think he it's needs all he can get today. Now the Colts get the ball. Indianapolis won the toss. They will receive. You say that the advantage is in their favor? Absolutely it is. Okay. They have the ball. Number one. That's right. Okay. We'll be back with overtime right after these messages from your local station. Clarence Verdan for the Colts. They're trying to hide Verdan. They want after they be, want to run it back. That would be uh, after their 47 was for block. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Aggie, I will kick off again. spinning kick that Verdan will take at his four yard line to the 10 20 breaks it 35 and out to the 38 yard line where Aguiar the kickoff man actually ran him out of bounds ball devastating tackle <laughs> all right big return Jeff George knows now I mean I, I don't I don't know what to say about Bia Sushi how close do you have to get on the goal line? I think you got to get it in the end zone. I think I really don't think they want to drive field goal. It's one of those confidence factors too in a ball game. I mean, it, and it happens to a lot of people. You see it in golf when a guy starts losing his choke, takes a little while to get back. And here in the game, he's missed. He's missed two badly and had one blocked. It. I mean, it was so low that it was blocked at the line of scrimmage. Phrase. I'm not taking any away. He did a great job blocking. It. But you do lose your confidence. Turnover looms large. Also, here is a throw. It came in on the one hop. Incomplete. It'll be second down and ten for the Colts as he tried an out pattern to Jesse Hester. We're in overtime at the Hoosier Dome as Jeff George checks his handy wrist playbook. He comes up with get it downfield deep to Bill Brooks. Four-man rush, swing pass to Anthony Johnson. He breaks it inside. A terrific run by Johnson, who has a first down for the Colts. You know who makes this play work really after it's thrown out there, other than George and Johnson, is Ray Donaldson, number 53. Watch what the center does, and it really doesn't get a, a big block on the right of the screen. Watch this. Bing. He just gets a piece of uh, Bo Lewis and enable him to get it a first down. That's hustle. Wasn't a pancake block, but it certainly was an influencer in getting the first down. So now the Colts get it out to their 47-yard line. Here comes the rush. There's the throw. Woo! The Jets are all over the receiver. Has 
to protest he was fouled, but the official right there says the coverage was good. Mike Brim was covering. Second and ten. The Jets in the secondary. I mean, here's here's Brim on Hester on a, on the top of your screen. Watch this. He's going over for the ball. Now, these people want to see a call here. Hester's looking for when he's getting hit. But when you look at this, look at the Colts. All they have to do is not to worry about going downfield the 10 to 12 yards. Just throw that little dump pass again out to Johnson or out to the tight end because these people are open short. The Jets are giving them the short stuff. All outside the Jets. They play for Jeff George. The second down and five. We had somebody in the neutral zone for the Defense, Jets. Defense, offside, five yards, repeat, second down. Mercer, he made contact. There it is. He really wants Jeff George, but he left a bit early. I would dump this ball again out to Anthony Johnson. Reason being that he's going to be one-on-one -on, -one on number 57, Mo Lewis. If you can get that kind of a matchup, you got to give the benefit of the doubt to the runner. Sure worked last time. It did. Good for 11 yards and a first down. Second down and five now for the Colts. As they cross midfield. Anthony Johnson on the run. He gets plenty. First down Colts to the 38-yard line of the Jets. Ryan Washington makes the tackle. You know, I'm, I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, oh, team, sorry, you were going to see Anthony Johnson again with the blocking up front. Ray Donaldson and company, they just get some excellent block. Dixon gets a good block. Salt gets a good block. Watch that in the middle of the line. There's Salt. There's Dixon. Kevin Paul. Moss. But, you know, I was just sitting there and I started to laugh. Where do you, where do you decide, okay, we're going to kick the field goal, Rick? <laughs> or win. Well, I tell you, you've got to be way down to try. And the last one was blocked. That puts an additional wrench in the, the wheel works as the Jets have gotten a big rush up the middle on Biasucci. What a catch. No, he didn't. No? The ball hit the ground. Ball hit the ground. No catch. Looked like Hester had it, but the official right there says no. It'll bring up second down and ten. Ball to the outside. There's Jesse Hester coming back to the ball. There the ball goes through his arms. The official is right there. Excellent call. And terrific coverage. James Hasty. I mean, he's been out there on that island. He and Brim, they've been out there by themselves. Now you're going to have Brim on the top side with Langhorn. There's Jesse Hester. He's coming out wide left. He's up against James Hasty, the best, the Jets' best one-on-one -on -one cover. Second down and 10. Jets bring up the linebackers coming on a blitz. It's picked up. Perfect throw and a catch by Langhorn. Oh, you might want to keep running. No, you don't want to keep running. You almost lost his head. I'm going to tell you something. Brim makes a tremendous play here. You talk about perfect timing by the corner. Watch Brim 43 as Langhorn catches the ball. There's the ball. Watch this. Bang, bang. I mean, that is great defense. And also give Langhorn credit for hanging on to the ball. Now you're the third and one. I, you know, it was a great tackle, but he gave up a nine-yard catch. Yeah, I understand that, but I mean, you're out there one-on-one. -on -one. They got Carthen in the backfield. And they've got Rodney Culver in, a rookie running back, two 225-pound-plus backs. Culver. I don't know if he got there. They've got to go for it, I think, from scrimmage if he didn't get there. Go well, for it. I'll tell you what, it depends on where they mark this, this, the, the, the official. It's going to be short, it looks like, Paul. Sanford Rivers, number 121, is the guy that ran in there, and he's the one that was going to mark the ball. Now, we're sending out Bia Sushi. You've got to stick with your guy. They're doing that. Oh, sure. I mean, he's a good kicker. Believe me. I'm just saying, he's just had a terrible day. I mean, he could have won this game a long time ago. The first time he missed the field goal. And you know, you notice the guys just stay away from that. Sark's going to call a timeout. The ball is position at the 29 yard line. The hold will be at the 37. Jets are going to call a timeout. That's right. Make them think about it. Guy looks like maybe he can't see out of that helmet too well. Looks like down over his eyes. Be a 47-yarder. 
Now, Dean Biasucci has given some time to think it over as he has a chance to win it in overtime. Hit it. Jerry's been talking to himself enough after those misses. Yeah, but he's starting to argue with himself. Then you really know you got a problem. <laughs> Boy, you could really be a, <laughs> could be a hero here or a big, big goal. Talk about the whole herd. The executive producer of NBC Sports is Terry O'Neill. Coordinating producer of NFL football, John Ferratzis. The producer of today's game, Glenn Adamo. Directed by John Gilmartin. Our thanks to statistician Jeff Nelson and Jeff Yarborough. As the Indianapolis Colts they have a long time to think over what could decide this game for them. A show of unity on the 50. That's uh, a lot of defensive guys say, please. <laughs> we don't want to go. Please make this thing so we don't have to go out there again. Ed Marchabrota aging quickly on the sideline. This is it. Or is it? He misses. The Jets take over and they'll get their crack at it. A 3-3 game. He's got it. with a 47-yard field goal that wins the game in overtime, 6-3. Biasucci, when he kicks it, he knows he's got it. And Stark do it, too. I mean, the, the holder can almost feel it because, he, you know, that pop that he has, they both do it as soon as the ball was hit. This is just an, a sensational defensive football game. It was that. And once again, our final score, the Colts 6, the Jets 3, coming up next on NBC, the presidential debate. Then stay tuned for Eyewitness Video. Later, the best-selling author Jackie Collins miniseries, Lady Boss. For Paul McGuire, this is Don Cricky. Glad you could be with us from Indianapolis where the Colts win by...